The AI revolution is here and it's here to stay. With a technology this disruptive, the early adopters will have a huge advantage over everyone else. So if you wanna learn cybersecurity in 2023 and beyond, you must learn these AI tips. These tips will be super helpful for all skill levels, but will be especially useful for beginners. And my clients have told me that the last item on this list has been extremely useful for them. So you'll definitely wanna stay tuned until the very end of the video. And while AI can be a super powerful tool that you definitely should be using in your learning journey, there is still no replacement for a human mentor. Someone who has been through the cybersecurity process and landed a job in the field and can guide you to do the same. Send me a DM with the word AI to my Instagram at Elevate Cyber, and let's come up with a game plan to get you into cybersecurity as quickly as possible. And so now without further ado, let's jump right into it. So we're here inside ChatGPT, which is an AI technology that's absolutely exploded in the last year and for good reason. AI like this, and there's gonna be a lot of AI probably that will emerge that's very similar to this. You need to know how to use it because it's extremely useful for everyone, like I was saying earlier. Now, the first prompt that I wanna introduce you guys to is a prompt that I would describe as your cybersecurity dictionary style of using this. So, in cybersecurity, if you're not aware, there's a lot of lingo, a lot of terminology that we use, get bounced around. And to be honest, even if you're a professional in the field, you might wanna use this trick occasionally as you inevitably encounter terms that you may never have heard before. But certainly as a beginner, you're gonna be wanting to make use of this very early and very often. So we could do things like, you know, maybe we hear the term SHA-1 hash and we don't know what that means. Well, you can go to ChatGPT and just ask it, what is a SHA-1 hash? Now, of course you can do this in something like Google as well, but the advantage that ChatGPT has is you can have a, a dialogue with the chatbot and ask it follow-up questions and things like that. You might want to clarify. And in certain scenarios, this can be more efficient and you know, more time effective and, and easier to use than something like Google where you have to dig and hunt through these different articles and links and kind of hope that the link that you're clicking on answers all the questions that you have. Whereas with ChatGPT, it's a lot more straightforward. You can ask it questions as needed. Now, one thing to be careful about with these AI models, they're not always correct. Now, when you're asking it simple questions like this, where there's a very clear definition and things like that, you normally can be pretty confident that it's going to give you the right answer. But when it comes to more nuanced things, things like that, sometimes this thing can be wrong. And when it's wrong, it's very confidently wrong. So that is one caution that I just had to bring up. But for the most part, you can trust most of the answers here to these basic questions, things like that. Like what does X mean? What does Y mean? It's almost always right there. So here I asked it, what is a SHA-1 hash? And it went ahead and explained it to me, gave it the definition. It even went as far as to say, hey, it's no longer considered secure for these reasons. This is what you should use instead. So absolutely amazing. Now, let's say we had a follow-up question to that. Like, hey, can I use, you know, how can I use a SHA-256 hash in Linux? Well, I asked it that question and it gives me detailed results on, you know, this is the command that you would run in Linux to take the SHA-1 or SHA-256 hash of some file. And when you do, here's an example of the type of output that you can expect from that. And it goes really into detail. So absolutely amazing for these simple definitions and stuff. So here's another one. Let's say you hear the term SQL DBA and you're like, you know, what is that? I have no, has so many acronyms, right? Well, you can ask it. And here it says a SQL database administrator and even goes to say, hey, SQL is the structured query language and explains what that is, right? DBA, database administrator. So essentially this is an, an IT role, uh, basically an admin of the databases. And so it goes into detail of all the responsibilities of that role and things like that. So number two, the way you can use this, and this one will be a lot more useful for I mean, definitely all skill levels, but probably people that are a little bit more practiced in this field, they're going to be using it the second way a lot. And that is the tech as a technical assistant. So you can get it to do things like write code, give it some code and analyze it maybe for vulnerabilities, for whatever you're looking for, or maybe ask it, um, how would I build this thing? You know, what commands would I run if I wanted to do X, Y, or Z? And to give you some practical examples of that, I have one here. This came up in a recent CTF I was doing. I was doing some privilege escalation. And in the privesk, I needed to 
write to an Nginx configuration file to spin up a web server with WebDAV enabled. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it, but it was a very specific thing that I didn't know how to do off the top of my head. Yes, I could have used Google for it. And actually I tried Google for a little bit, but there was a lot of different um, articles on it. And a lot of it was more from a just basic perspective and not nuanced to exactly what I was trying to do. I was trying to do something very specific. I was trying to enable a server with WebDAV. So I just relied on ChatGPT for performing this and it just spit it out to me right away. Boom. Here's the, uh, the configuration file that I would need to write. And yeah, maybe I want to modify certain things. Maybe I'm not too happy with this initial code here. And that was the case, right? I don't really care to lock it behind auth because I'm just doing this from an attacker's perspective in a CTF. So I gave it a follow-up question. I said, Hey, you know, rewrite this without authentication. So rewrite the comp file to not require authentication is what I told it. And it remembers your conversation history. So that's a great thing. You're having like a back and forth dialogue with this chatbot. So it then said, okay, here it is uh, without the uh, authentication. So I end up using this as a template and working off of that. And I think that's how you're gonna use it a lot of times is um, as a starting point. And you, know, you can see from there, right? There's some things you have to modify, like here it even tells you in a comment, which is really nice. Hey, you're gonna wanna replace this with the actual domain or IP address. So yeah, really handy as you see here. And the next thing that I did, I asked it another follow-up question. I said, hey, how can I force Nginx to use this configuration file? Because now I have the comp file, but how do I get it to use it? So it gave me a bunch of ways here. Uh, you can create like a link file, different things like that, restart the services. And then I asked it, can I get it to use the comp file by using the Nginx command? It says, yes, you can. This is what you need to do. Nginx tax C, which is what I ended up using uh, to get it to load my configuration file and thus apply the web dev server. So I can upload files to the target. And so yeah, it was very helpful for that. Another very common use case is anything related to code. So here I say, hey, write a Python script to enumerate subdirectories on a website. And boom, within like a couple seconds, it spits out this template code here to go ahead and do some subdirectory brute forcing. If you're familiar with tools like GoBuster, DirSearch, uh, FFuff, stuff like that, this is one of the things that can do is enumerate subdirectories on websites. So files and folders on a website. And yeah, so maybe I would want to modify some of this. Maybe I wouldn't want to just copy paste it and run it as is. I would want to, you know, modify at least definitely like the target URL and the wordless file and things like that. Maybe some other stuff as well. But as you can see a huge advantage versus doing this from scratch and in my opinion, in a lot of cases, an advantage over Googling for this stuff. Cause like, if I Google for that, like, I mean, let's, let's just Google for that, right? Let's compare the apples to apples to apples here, right? If I Google write a Python script to, or, you know, just Python script to enumerate subdirectories on a website, uh, it not going to be as straightforward, right? I don't see anyone with like their full code, right? Uh, yeah. So let's click on a few more of these and yeah, we can try Googling different things, but my point is chat GPT is an easier alternative to having to do it this way. Yes. If you dig through the documentation, you can figure it out. If, if you know what to Google, you can, you can find what you need to make this happen, but look how much faster it is in this case, just to simply ask chat GPT and boom, you have this code here. So massive advantage, I would highly recommend this for pretty much everyone, beginners, intermediates, advanced. You can also ask it, you know, about uh, what tools can do X, Y, or Z commands, things like that as well. So number three, and this is the one that my clients have been absolutely loving and feel free to steal this from me, use this from, you know, as much as possible, take advantage of this third one. And that is using chat GPT to explain concepts to you in cybersecurity like you're a five-year-old. This is something that, especially if you're a complete beginner, what you know, if you're someone that's coming from a non-technical background and you know you have a background in IT or anything like that, this is going to be your bread and butter right here. So example of that is you know hashing. We're looking at the SHA-1 hash earlier. Let's say you don't even know what hashing is. When you were reading the definition up here on hashing, you were having a hard time understanding. Like, I don't know what all this jargon is, right? This is still too much jargon. Well, 
you can use this prompt here. Explain X to me like I am a five-year-old. So we do that. And what we see here is a really bare bones example, right? So about a magical toy box and keeping track of your toys with stickers. This is, you know, try it for yourself. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, another one, and this is a very common cybersecurity interview question. I don't care if you're interviewing for the offensive side, defensive side. What they like to ask you is this one here, explain the CIA triad. So you can ask it, hey, Explain the CIA triad to me like I'm a five-year-old. I'm going to read this one off. I think this is an absolutely amazing analogy here that it gives. So, you know, the CIA triad is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So for confidentiality, it says, imagine you have a special diary where you write your secrets and thoughts. Confidentiality is like keeping that diary safe and private. You don't want anyone else to read it. It's your special place for your personal stuff integrity. Now let's say you draw a beautiful picture and want to make sure it stays just as beautiful. Integrity is like protecting your drawing from anyone trying to mess it up or change it. You want your picture to stay true and not get ruined. Availability. Think about your favorite toy. Availability is like always being able to play with your favorite toy whenever you want. You don't want it to disappear or be taken away. It should be there for you to enjoy. So the CIA tryout is about keeping things private, confidentiality, making things stay the way they are, integrity, and ensuring that you can always access what you need, availability. It's like making sure your secrets are safe, your drawings don't get messed up and your favorite toy is always ready to play with. I think this is an absolutely amazing analogy and there's so many more just waiting for you to discover by asking explain X to me like I'm a five-year-old. So hopefully these tips were super helpful for you. And, uh, you know, let me know down in the comments section below, but if you want to really optimize your path into getting into cybersecurity, then you're going to want to use AI, of course, but you want to do more than that, right? You want to do everything you can to really optimize getting in here and as efficiently as possible. So send me a DM once again to my Instagram at Elevate Cyber with the word AI. We can help come up with a game plan that is tailored to you because look, I can give general advice to you guys as an audience on my YouTube channel. I do that all the time, but it's not going to be optimal for everyone, right? So if you want advice on what you should do based off of your goals and your interests and things like that, let's have a more individualized conversation and get you on that path.